statistics get expressed in terms of probability. You say the fact that this person now got well after I healed them has a, you know, there's a one chance in a thousand that that would have happened randomly. You can say those kinds of things when you do statistically. You never get to the point that you can say yes because it's, object it's not objective. You can't tell. But you can say, I do this a lot and I always get results. You can get the statistics. You have to do the statistics. Okay, well, when you, when you learn something like this, you don't walk away from it. It goes on. And like anything, the more you know, the easier it is to know more. So it accelerates. Learning accelerates. I'm a physicist, so I continually work for the next 30 some years to find out how this thing worked, doing experiments in that larger reality, basically to find out what the physics was in that larger reality. That larger reality of consciousness has rules. It has its own causality, and you have to do experiments there to find out what it is. So that's what I've been doing for the last 30 years, and at the end of it all, I did this publication, My Big Toe. And I have to tell you that it, it had to be an inside job to come to this conclusion. You could never have figured this out objectively from the outside. That's why Einstein was stuck. He could not do it from the outside. Consciousness is a subjective thing. You can't study it intellectually and understand it. You have to experience it. Okay, so reality, system of consciousness. Consciousness is the media of reality. Okay? Information is the content of reality. I say these real slow because these are big ideas. Entropy is the evolutionary motivator of consciousness. Okay, fundamental reality is modeled as a system of digital consciousness. Now think about it for a minute. That sounds really weird to those of you who have been working in consciousness, you know, simulation, digital consciousness, you know, what is this? This is a scientist gone mad, right? It makes sense. Think of what consciousness is. Experience, right, is the first component of consciousness. There's four things that make up consciousness. One is experience. Well, what's experience? Experience is the experience we're having in this room, right? You look at me and I'm looking at you and we see light that comes through our eyes, through the lens, to the, to the retina, into the optic nerve. Well, what is that light? It's just data. When it gets into the optic nerve, what is it? It's electrical pulses. It's neurons, patterns of neurons. It's just data. Okay? Memory. Well, memory. You know, that's, that's just like data storage, right? You've got data, and you store it someplace. That's data storage. Processing. Okay, now you have to have memory, otherwise every experience would be the first. So, you know, memory is very important for consciousness. Processing is important for consciousness because processing says, looks at the data and finds patterns. It finds patterns in the experience. That way you can make sense of the experience. And the last thing you have to have to define consciousness is there has to be a self-modifying feedback loop. In other words, you have to be able to learn. So you stick your finger in the fire and it hurts and you pull it back out, right? You put the finger in the fire, you got data, right? And that data was little electrical pulses running up the nerves and into the brain. And that data that got stored in there someplace in your memory, okay? You processed on it and said, oh, bad thing to do. You, know, you looked at that, you came to that conclusion, wasn't healthy. Then you have this self-modifying feedback that says, don't do it again. You know, and it changes then the way you act. You don't do that again. You've modified your experience. You don't do the same thing over. All right, now all of the above attributes are all about information. Okay? So you think about information is data, your consciousness, you just have data coming in to your consciousness. Okay, now think about it this way. If we could get somehow, some magical way, if I could stimulate your optic nerve so that you would, exactly in the same way that it's being stimulated now, with me standing up here talking to you, if I could stimulate that somehow, put you in some dark hole, right, and seal it up, but stimulate that optic nerve exactly the way it's being stimulated now, what would you see? You'd see exactly what you're seeing now. And could you tell that it was different? Could you tell that you were not in a deep, dark hole? No. Because whatever's on that optic nerve goes to that brain. It gets interpreted as what you're seeing. So if I can reproduce those signals, if I can reproduce that data, I'll reproduce your experience. There's no way to tell the difference. Okay, so 
Your experience is just data coming into your consciousness. That's it. Okay, next. At the root, we've got information. This is one that will surprise you. Information is non-physical. That seems weird. We're surrounded by information. We all have information overload. We live in the information age, but information is non-physical. Information is the meaning, the content, the significance, not the media or the code symbols. If you look at a book, the book, the paper's the media. All the little words, the ink, the ink marks inside the book are the code symbols. That's not information. Okay, that's coded. You know, the, the information's in a code and put in the media. Information is what those code symbols mean. What's the content? What's the significance of them? That's the information that you get from the book. What you get from the book isn't little ink squiggles and it isn't paper. It's meaning, it's content. Information is non-physical. It's meaning, content, significance, and you need a consciousness to get information. Right? Because a consciousness is where content, significance, and meaning comes from. Okay? You can take a machine, you take a camera and look at that book and that page, and does the camera get the meaning, the content, the significance? No. Does it see the, the, the type and does it see the paper? Sure. But it's not conscious. There's no meaning. So what we get from that uh, is that consciousness is information. Okay? That's what that means. Um, information requires lower entropy organization of code symbols. You can't just take the alphabet and put a, put a random display of letters out there and you don't get information. To make information out of it, they have to be organized. Well, remember, organized is lower entropy. All right. At the most fundamental level, consciousness is information. Information is non-physical, thus consciousness is non-physical. At the most fundamental level, information is bits. And at the most fundamental level, bits are digital and binary. A one or a zero, an off or an on, a yes or a no, up or down, whatever. What's the logical consequence of these statements? A consciousness system is best modeled at its most fundamental level by a digital information system. Weird, yes, but it fits the data. Consciousness evolves by lowering its entropy, okay, by improving the value, the useful information content of its bits. So here's consciousness, you know, you put your hand in that fire, right, and then you pull it out, so not only, you know, you learn from that experience. When you learn from that experience, now you know better. Well, what have you done? You've just increased the informational content of your consciousness. You've learned something. You know not to do that anymore. You've arranged the bits at your disposal into a configuration that is a little more useful to you than before. Before, you didn't know not to stick your finger in that fire. Now you do. So you've rearranged your informational bits into a configuration that's more powerful for you more helpful, okay. more useful. All right, here's a summary of uh, where we are so far because these are difficult uh, concepts to get your arms around. The larger consciousness system evolves by lowering the entropy of the system. It lowers the entropy of the system by organizing the bits at its disposal in a more profitable configuration. New bits and organizational opportunities are generated by using consciousness intent to apply free will choice to incoming experience.